Happy Friday, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us on Friday afternoon or near afternoon, depending on, on where you are. We're going to go ahead and get started with today's um, webinar. If you've joined us for the rest of the series, thanks for tuning back in. We're going to round out the, the Raptor groups today. If you're joining us for the first time, welcome. Uh, if you are unfamiliar with who Hawkwatch International is, uh, we're, an, we're a nonprofit. We're based in the West. Uh, and our mission is to conserve the environment through long-term research and monitoring and through education programs um, it's focused on raptors as indicators of ecosystem health. Uh, we have a lot of research in the western part of North America, um, across North America, and then some international programs in, in Africa, in Ethiopia, and in South, South Africa, uh, and are, are growing um, elsewhere. So um, thanks for joining us today. Uh, my name Dave Oliar, and I'm the Director of Long-Term Monitoring and Community Science at Hawkwatch, and I'm joined by Jesse Watson. Hi, Jesse. Hi, folks. Who is our research biologist? And together we, we manage all things uh, migration at Hawkwatch and have been having a lot of fun doing these, these webinars. At least I have. How about you, Jesse? Yeah, absolutely. So today we're, we're kind of rounding out. We've covered some of the, the, the earlier groups, we covered the exhibitors, we covered the Budios. Uh, last time we talked about the Falcons, and, and today is our, our, um, our medley mix, right? It's a buffet of different kinds of, of, of raptors to, to round out the, the raptors that we frequently see um, in North America, and particularly um, on migration in North America, right? So let's go ahead and get started. That's a nice view right there. So this is a view from the Chelan Ridge Hawkwatch in central Washington state, looking north, um, watching for migrating hawks. And, and if that site were running to this season, which which it's it's not, um, we would uh, we'd see a lot of these species that we're going to talk about today, but not all of them. If you're just joining us. Um, for the first time um, this session, we'll quickly mention that here are a whole um, variety of um, raptor specific and focused ID guides. Um, this is not an exclusive list, but this, this is a list of some of the ones that we, we like quite a bit. Um, they cover hawks from a whole lot of different angles and distances and focus on um, some non-traditional um, marks and things to look for that, that your standard field guides um, typically don't don't focus on right Jesse mm -hmm. but they're kind of the the guides for the guides that you want to have for this this kind of thing identifying raptors in the and then, the and then the, the newest and latest and greatest edition is if you're into uh, digital versions this is uh, this Raptor ID app tell us about that Jesse Raptor ID app is free uh, it's probably the best resource that exists in North America for easy, quick access to a lot of a wealth of information and knowledge about raptor identification, um, particularly or exclusively, I guess, uh, diurnal species. So lots of video, high quality video of, of each of the diurnal species, as well as a bunch of high quality photos. Um, quick, easy access, it's free, doesn't take up too much space on your phone. Um, so if you don't have it, I recommend you get it and at least check it out, decide if you want to keep it. But it, it, it is available for Android and Apple, um, and so I don't think you can go wrong with it. It's got pretty much everything in there. It's even got a link to um, the, the calls of the different species, right? So you can see range maps, calls, videos that are narrated, uh, great. Um, still pictures with captions describing um, field guides or field marks that you look for. You know, the only thing it doesn't do is tell you what the birds you're looking at is for the most part, right? We're done with our plug for the app. Let's move on to talking about some graphic groups. Hopefully you all have the app by now, if you didn't. Your computer doesn't want to let me have control, Jesse. You want to sure. move us on? I'll move us ahead. So we've highlighted this before, but again, I think it's important, one, for everyone that's been along the whole time, but especially for anyone that's watching this session is the first session you're watching is that when you ID raptors in flight, there's kind of a sequence and series that you want to go through, and it's not looking for 
specific plumage things right away and marks that you would turn to like your, your Sibley or your Peterson guide and see, it's actually you want to look at overall shape first because most of the time you won't see um, raptors in flight as up close as, as you need to to see a lot of those kinds of, of features in those types of guides. So you want to look at shape and you want to think about whether the bird is compact or lanky. You want to think about what the wings look like in terms of their length relative to um, the rest of the body and the tail, um, the shape of the wings, the shape of the tail. Shape is a really key thing to look at and it's one of the things that stands out um, at, at a distance um, more than a lot of other things. The, what's the next the next step and next feature to look at? Yeah, so coupling with shape would be flight mannerisms. So now you've seen the bird, you kind of got a feel for what it looks like in the sky, but then how does it move? Um, is it is it moving fast or slow? Does it beat its wings quickly or slowly? Lots of wing beats um, or intermittent, shallow, deep wing beats. And then how does it move relative to the conditions, mainly the wind? Um, a, a big bird's going to be more stable generally. A smaller bird's going to get blown around. And so coupling those two things, shape and flight mannerisms together, kind of help get you on track to, to ID the bird you're looking at. Sometimes that's all you'll get, right? You won't you won't get any more than that. But if you know what you're looking for, you can get it down to a group of raptors, um, and a lot of times you can get it down to species too, based on just shape and and behavior, flight mannerisms alone. You watch it long enough, and the bird gets close enough. And for some species, there are plumage characteristics that show up at a great distance, and so those are useful field marks too. But we kind of drill down shape, flight, and then plumage things that we look for. So then you can start to to ID species between one another based on plumage um, characteristics that show up. And even within some of the species, and we'll talk about quite a few of them today, you can tell sexes apart or you can you can um, group the bird into to an age class. Then lastly is the habitat or the season. Um, so it's fall right now. We've got a lot of birds moving south. Uh, some new birds depending on the area that you're in that are going to show up and some birds that are going to disappear so we're, we're waiting on rough-legged hawks here to to show up anytime soon we know they're moving and we're seeing some of the last swings and hawks start to move south so know what kind of habitat you're in and what time of year it is that you're looking for a given bird definitely all right you have control Next slide Like we're having, there you go. Try it now, Dave. There you go. Hey, perfect. So uh, we we focused on the groups of hawks and the the, the shape and the the shape will get you there in a lot of cases. And so um, we have a session that you can watch on YouTube. All of these have been recorded and are on YouTube. If you uh, you missed a session or want to go back, um, but the the exhibitors are short, rounded, winged, long-tailed raptors that are built for maneuverability. We covered those. We covered the budios or the soaring hawks with their long rounded our long um, broad wings and, and, and broad tails. Uh, we did falcons last time. Uh, we're going to add the eagles today. Tell us about eagles, Jesse. Yeah, so two eagle species that we're going to dive into, of course, bald eagle and golden eagle. Um, the eagles are super large, very long wings and broad wings relative to all the other species we talked about. Um, they're built to do whatever they want, so they can they can fly fast, they can fly high, they can perch, they can they can do whatever they want um, and they kind of rule the, the roost. So we're gonna talk about the eagles and then we're gonna talk about a few others, like Dave said, the medley species that don't really fit into any of these categories. A potpourri of raptors. Uh, before we go too much further, I just noticed in the Q&A um, panel um, that someone was asking for an audio check. Is there anyone not hearing us? I guess actually <laughs> you wouldn't be able to answer that question. If you can't hear us or if you do hear us, because everyone, if you hear us, give us a quick chat, yes or something. Look at the Q&A, can you get an audio check? Hopefully uh, I'm hearing you well and it looks like we're both on mark. Thank you, Toby. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and, and, and move on. Perfect, all right. Um, so let's let's jump in and, and we're going to start off um, this ID group just like we've done the last few with a, a quick quiz. 
I don't have control anymore, Jesse. Interesting. Me. There we go. So here we go. I'm going to open up a poll real quick. We'll take a minute to do this. You should see a poll pop up. And uh, take a look at those four birds here. And, you know, based on what you know, and, and it's okay to say unknown on all four of these. Hopefully at the end of the, the session, um, you'll have some of them down. But we want to give yourself a quick quiz and see what you think these four species are. We'll cover all four of these today. So there's no there's no repeat species in this one from previous sessions. They're all up in the air. They're all flying. So this is like a good like, you know, we're looking at shape. We're looking at how the wings are held. Um, they're still, so we're really not going to see what like the environment's doing to the bird in, in this case, but we'll have a video quiz at the end. Seeing a few people are filling out. At least question number one. Question number two. We've got about 20 seconds left. We don't want to take a ton of time on this. So make a guess. And notice that we also put unknown raptor as an option down at the bottom. I think Jesse pointed out early on in one of the early sessions is like, you're never wrong if you say it's just an unknown raptor. That's a correct answer. It could be more correct, but it is not wrong. All right, I think we're done. I'm going to share the poll re results here. Hopefully you yeah, all you see the poll now. Yeah, I can see them. Oh, great. So we're going to go through the answers here too real quick. You want to take us through these, Jesse? Sure. We're not going to dwell on the ID tips because we're going to go into each of these species and we'll round back to this at the end of the talk. So if if you're waiting for us to say why, uh, just, just hold that thought till the end. Um, the first one is a California condor. The majority of respondents got California condor. Good job. Yeah. Second Ten, one on 10 of top, 65. Second one on the top right is a golden eagle. Looks like four of 65. We had bald eagle as another high guess, which is a good guess. Bottom left, number three is osprey. Which 14 were, people 14 got months. Osprey. Nice, nice work. And, and number four, go ahead. Uh, we've got a split between the majority of respondents uh, are, are getting an eagle off of that. Um, roughly half say bald and half say golden. Um, this is actually a bald eagle, and, and we'll, we'll jump right in to eagles right now and, and talk about some of the reasons why why that's the case. So again, we'll, we'll come back to these in the end and, and touch on the ID points. So here's here's the distribution map of bald eagle and where it, based on where you live or where you are you might expect to see bald eagles and what time of year you can see there's quite a bit of purple um, there's there's a lot of places across North America where they're they're resident year round um, but then there, you know they there's quite a bit further south of that blue that they show up in the non breeding season and and they're they're on the move or they will be on the move in another few weeks starting to head down to those areas and let's take a look at a bald eagle in flight. We'll run through this and then we'll let it go again and talk. You know, this is one of those species, like if you get a look like this, I think everyone's going to get bald eagle on this bird probably. The, that striking white head and striking white tail is 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 pretty, pretty unique, right? Um, long, long wings, dark body. Look how long the wings of that bird are. And it's, it's slow motion here, but notice that wing flap. The wings go up. The upstroke is quite deep for bald eagles. Super powerful bird. You can just get that feeling from a glance at it. Looks like this bird had a had a snack too. It looks like it's got a full crop. See a top heavy right underneath. Notice how far the tail and the head project, how big that tail is, how far the head projects and how long the head looks. We're gonna we're gonna get into that. Go ahead, Dave. Are you? Uh, I was. I actually got control. It's so, off right now, so. 
Jesse's talking about like the head projects out in front of the leading edge of the wings and then the tail projects pretty far back behind the trailing edge of the wings, right? That's that's what we're we're talking about. Um, and um, so bald eagles have huge heads, right? Their heads are big and their heads are even bigger because their bills are extreme, extremely large. Reading all this. Anything here? Let me turn off the... I have to turn this off. Oh yeah, go for it. Now it's frozen, so maybe you have to turn it off. Okay, I got it. Yes. Yeah, so... You control things the rest of the way. Okay. All right, let's go into the the photos. So this is an adult bald eagle. Um, as many of us probably are aware, the adults have this vibrant bright head, bright white head, super bright bill kind of a yellowish color in the big big white obvious tail <clears throat> so those are all characteristics of, of an adult bald eagle but what a lot of people may not be aware of is that it, it takes bald eagle five years to get to that that iconic plumage that everybody recognizes from from afar um, and so for the first four years of a bald eagle's life it's going through various molts and has varying stages of of brown and and white um, plumage and, and and so as they age that they shift from a, a dark bird with a lot of white interspersed on the underside like you see in some of these images here to a more complete dark bodied and the head and tail go from from dark to, to white. I like this image. I'm going to get the pointer out. Both these images here and here kind of just show like this straight across kind of plank like look. Like the wings are just straight across all the way. Notice right in here, there's no pinching in of the wings, and that'll be relevant when we talk about golden eagle. Just keep that in mind. And we have a comparison shot showing the two species together. Uh, but obviously, massive, massive body wings, the head projecting and the tail projecting. Steady bird. Soars on pretty, pretty flat wings. You can see again, there's not that taper that Jesse was just talking about where the wings connect to the, the back edge of the wings connect to the body. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to dwell on each of the ages that much, but we'll touch on them for both bald and, and golden eagle. Um, so there's kind of three age classes, juvenile, subadult, and adult. And you can you can kind of pick these apart looking at these different uh, characteristics. So just something to keep in mind. I think we pointed it out before. If you get a good look like this, you can actually see that these feathers are all the same age, the same length, meaning that the, the feathers all grew in at the same time, which leads you to a juvenile um, because there's no subadult feathers. Now, again, that's pretty difficult in flight unless you catch a nice photo like this. But there's other characteristics like the, the kind of uh, well, dark dark eye is one thing. So it's a brown eye. The bill is a darker color. It's not that bright yellow. Um, and what what else, Dave? Just kind of the overall brown appearance. Of the overall bird. brown from below. Um, the the white underwing um, plumage that you can see there. Notice that it's it's going to be sort of variable and it's dispersed throughout, which is different than golden eagle. Um, plumage, the white plumage on uh, a uh, juvenile bird, which we'll, we'll see here shortly. Look how big that head looks, and you can even see the, the bill from underside here, like like bald eagles have a huge schnoz, right? Their, their bill is, is big, and that's what makes the head look so big. Remember what I just said about the different age feathers? Notice the secondaries here. There's some that are longer and some that are shorter. So the new feathers are actually shorter on these bald eagles than, than the juvenile feathers. So we know this bird is at least molted one more time after it became a juvenile. So it's, this is a second year. It's got this white belly. That's kind of how they're categorized often. And remember, there's a lot of variation within each of these ages. So like, don't beat yourself up. Aging eagles is hard um, and lots of mistakes are made. But the point is that this is a bald eagle because of all these other characteristics we've talked about. Long. Broad wings, big head, white belly. Here's a side view. 
So this, these are our third third year birds, and you can see that white starts to to become less and less distributed across the, the underside. Uh, these birds are starting to get some of that white head plumage. Not a ton of white in the tail just yet. Um, and uh, what else do you notice, Jesse? Uh, again, these are, of course, fantastic photos. So you can actually see this bird's eyes starting to lighten up, the bills starting to change color into kind of the brighter yellow. Um, if we if we did have this freeze frame like this, you can see this is an old retained feather here. So it's actually a, a more faded color because it's been on the bird longer. It's got a lot more sun over time and, and has faded, whereas these other feathers are newer. So much fewer juvenile feathers left. They're almost gone. Um, and this bird is getting close to to being near an adult. Now it's still got some time to go. You can tell that there's not a full white head or a full white tail. But it's oops. Where's the wrong button? There's the fourth year. It's starting to look like an adult. You can just see that transition kind of continue. Of course, the next the next period would be that full adult that we showed in the first image. Great. Should we move on to golden? Yep. You want to talk about golden eagle? Yeah. So golden eagle are a very widespread species, not only in North America, but they are one of the few species um, that we've talked about, I guess, in our series that is on multiple continents. I think, check me, I think they're on every continent besides Antarctica. Um, so very widespread throughout the world. Um, we'll talk about osprey next, and they are also quite widespread, but in North America, they breed all the way up into Alaska, up into the Arctic, none of it, and uh, the Yukon Territory, and all the way throughout the West. They migrate down into Mexico. Um, Northern Mexico, there's there's golden eagles, and then of course there's eagles, golden eagles in the East, United States as well, and Canada. So here's our video. What do you see in this bird? Yeah, you know, the first thing that strikes me right on that down beat is like that bird's got long wings. Large body bird. The wings are are broad, widthwise, and long, right? And so um, that makes me think eagle. I start to look at some other things that show up, and kind of what you see here, um, and jump in after this or anytime, Jesse is like. You can even see just the, the nape on the back of the head of that bird is that kind of golden brown. Yeah, I think there's a nice look when it comes around here. Sorry. Now we're seeing some white too on the underside, but notice that it's located, it's very specifically located in spots on the wings and not scattered throughout and then on the, on the tail. Yeah, so there's that look at that golden nape right there. Finish this video, then we'll move on. Great image of a golden eagle here. The only thing I'll point out, I think, on this image is two two things. The golden nape again. Let me get my pointer. Obvious golden nape there. You can see the bill is shorter than than the other eagle that we looked at. But the, the feathered legs, again, we've talked about how that's really difficult to see in flight. This bird has its legs down, so it's helping us out, um, and it's a nice freeze frame. But if you remember, we talked about Ferruginous hawks and, and rough-legged hawks as the two Budio species that have feathered legs, meaning feathered all the way down the, the tarsi to the top of the feet. And this, this golden eagle is different from the bald eagle in that it has that characteristic. So if you have a nice perched image, you can you can pick that up. Go ahead. This is, this is a great shot of both a, a bald eagle and a golden eagle from from underneath, and to start to point out some of the things that that we're we're talking about in terms of diagnost diagnostics between the two species. Um, see where the the white on the the bald eagle is is kind of scattered on the belly and, and then under wings here. Um, the other thing that Jesse pointed out is if you look at the, the back edge of that 
um, the wings of the bald eagle as it goes. It pinches in, but it's a relatively mild pinch in. Whereas if you jump over to the other bird, you can see there's definitely a distinct pinch in on the back side of the wings to the body there, right? So hopefully you can see that. Hopefully you can see that the bald eagle's head is sticking out, is a little bit bigger. Um, the golden eagle has a head, you can see it clearly, but it's just proportionally smaller and doesn't jut out as far as the bald eagle. And this comparison is in the Raptor ID app. So if you go to, I think both, both of these eagle sections and look at the overview, you can kind of look at this and I think there's some text that goes along with it kind of picking it apart. There's a nice composite of, of varying golden eagle poses and, and some, some ages too. What, what do you see, Jesse? Yeah, so the thing you're looking for, again, we won't dive into all the details of aging eagles because it's difficult, but generally, and there's always variation, but generally younger birds have more white in the wings. Um, as you get towards an older bird, they have less white in the wings and kind of just this overall, again, brownish golden appearance. A lot of the, as, as the feathers um, are replaced, they get these kind of wavy bands in them. So the juvenile feathers typically don't have that. They're kind of plain. And then the older birds, subadults and adults, get more and more as, until they're fully adult. Um, so that, that you can see here. But again, the, the key is the, the shape of these birds. Uh, Look, think about the head relative to what we talked about with the bald eagle, as well as the, as well as the tail and the wings pinching in. There's a nice top side view of, of a juvenile golden eagle. Um, again, you can see the white patches out towards the, the distal part of the wing that are focused in one spot. Right, you can see the banded white tail. You can still see that that golden nape on this bird, and it's a long winged bird, um, broad winged, but the head, again, that head looks small compared to what a bald eagle would look like. What else do you see here, Jesse? Um, this, I mean, this image kind of makes me think of what the bird looks like in flight. You can see the kind of that, the raised wings. It looks like the bird's in a soar. And so that's kind of a good characteristic for, for a golden eagle is those raised wings. And, uh, you know, we refer to that, that the wings being up in a bit of a V, that's uh, what a lot of guides, uh, that's a dihedral, a mild dihedral. Yeah. It's a great look at an adult. Um, it kind of just speaks for itself. I don't think that, I mean, this is about as good a look at, uh, at a golden eagle that you're ever going to get. Um, so just amazing looking bird. Notice the, uh, I mentioned something about the waviness in those older feathers in the wings. You can kind of see that here. These little, little kind of wavy whitish bands. Not a lot of white at all in this bird. Beautiful golden nape. I actually see the feathered legs too. That's an adult golden eagle. Go for it. Jesse, Jesse mentioned it, but this is a nice image that, that kind of shows the progression of having the, um, the white tail bands for um, juvenile birds going through the different age classes and how that white disappears as the bird ages, right, all the way down to the adult tail that you can see down here at the bottom of this panel. Yeah, so we won't, we won't dwell on this but this this is a panel from the raptor id or sorry the hawk watch uh, in hand guide for diurnal raptors that recently came out um, and it's just kind of a nice walkthrough to see how they progress at least looking at the tail into an adult so if you're interested in that consider checking checking that out for more details so th those are the eagles right i guess the other thing we we didn't really touch on but like you mentioned it um we're talking about groups and things to look for is flight style and flight pattern mm -hmm. and you won't necessarily see all of those those plumage characteristics on bald eagle or golden eagle from afar but the thing that that strikes me at least when when we're looking at eagles um, from a distance um, is like how the wind impacts them or actually how most winds really for, for those two birds doesn't impact them right <clears throat> eagles, eagles are steady right they're they're just slow they seem like they're flying slow 
even if they're they're not because they're just big and they're far and to me like a distant eagle is like an aircraft carrier on on the ocean right just kind of tool and even in pretty high winds that bird is is in control and so that's something else to look back look at and think about So for, for osprey here, um, there are another pretty widespread species um, across North and Central North America, Central America, and South America. We can find them. Um, a lot of the majority of our osprey now are traveling on the way south to South America or Caribbean or, or Central America, where, wherever they're coming from would, would dictate that to some extent. Uh, so pretty widespread. Again, they are they they can be found on multiple different continents, which is pretty cool. Um, and they are a pretty unique species, of course, in that they're in their own category uh, as fish eating raptors, pretty much exclusively. What do you see here, Dave? Scroll through here, and as you're watching again, so another long winged raptor, but the wings are not as broad as the 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 eagles that we were looking at a minute ago. So they're narrower wings, they're long wings, you know, jumps out that you get this stark white and black contrast. The, the wing beats to me, at least. Um, they, they look, they're very up and down like pistons or mechanical. And mm -hmm. the video we're playing a little smoother, I think that'd come across more strongly, but if you're seeing a bird uh, in real life, um, that'll, that'll jump out at you, I think. You kind of see some white on the underside. I, I think I had mentioned before when we talked about the Budios that for me, depending on the angle, I've had many times where I have a split second thought like, oh, it's a Swainson's hawk. And then I come to my senses and put everything else together, all those other characteristics and realize, oh, no, 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 it's a... It's that contrast, those dark flight feathers, awesome. right? That that steers you there for sure. Yeah, so white, kind of that white head, that herky-jerky motion, white on the underside. Super long and lanky, but thin relatively wings, especially towards relative to the eagles. Uh, but that overall white appearance on the underside is is really and right the difference from the last two birds that we talked about. Yeah, the other thing right here that hopefully everyone's kind of seeing and thinking about whether you're using the words we're using or not is those wings are really drooping, right? That the way that the the outer part of the wings they're long, they're thin and they typically will hang down the outer portions in in a a bow bow down or droop down shape that's pretty that's pretty key and and typical of osprey here's a fish carrying an osprey somewhere <laughs> the age old the age old someone, someone else's joke but it's a good one uh you can see that that white and black contrast that jesse was talking about flight feathers are all dark uh, under underwing and body white, the the um, black eye mark going through the head, um, you know, you carrying a fish, uh, pretty pretty distinct. Osprey are are um, recognizable if you if you look at the silhouette up in the upper right part of the slide here. Again, that that long narrow wing shape and the fact that they're often held um, and, and create this this M shape in a glide that you can see there. It is pretty distinct, almost gall-like. A lot of people will, will describe an osprey in flight that way. It's not impossible to see an osprey fly by uh, on migration with a fish in its talons. And, you know, depending on where where there's nearby water, we've we've seen that before. So don't be shocked. And it it kind of applies to one of the next species we'll talk about too. Like you don't typically think of an osprey flying along a mountain range if you're talking about a mountain a mountain uh, count site, but it, it does happen. So you have a pretty good pretty good idea if you see one, like, okay, this bird is definitely moving. Why would it be up in these mountains? So here's a nice nice panel with kind of the different postures or some of the different postures. I think that silhouette was based on this image on the top left. The silhouette we've been looking at is kind of that M-shaped, thin, thin wings with the M-shaped overall white appearance on the bottom for all these birds. And then this bowed or kind of droop, drooped wings um, when the bird is kind of gliding along. The uh, the next species we'll talk about, and um, Jesse was talking about, like uh, so. This is the northern har harrier. You can see its distribution pretty widespread across North America. 
at various times of year. Um, this is a, a species like an open grassland, marshland, open area species. And, and if you live in that sort of a place um, and, and do a lot of birding, and even if you don't, this is probably a, a species that you've seen. And if you know harriers, more people know them from their low to the ground, um, really kind of almost so slow and back and forth that they look like they're going to fall out of the air flight as they're coursing over grass, tall grass and low grass looking and listening um, for for food. And so that's kind of like the, you know, when you conjure an image of a harrier in flight, that's what comes to mind for, for folk, for most people. Um, but during this time of year, um, we see them a little differently, right? Jesse, you want to show this video? Yeah, so this is a nice look at a harrier, northern harrier from the underside. Probably from a migration site. I can't remember where this video was filmed. But this is definitely the posture and the look that you would get. But this isn't that back and forth wobbly. This is a bird soaring high, direct flight. Oftentimes, at least in the west and in the mountains where you don't really think of it as harrier habitat. But that really long tail, um, the, the pretty long narrow wings, that can all sort of create, like it can lead you to a couple of groups that we've talked about before. I know a lot of times that can create an, an occipiter kind of um, a vibe for some people, right, Jesse? What other groups? I mean, you could, I mean, yeah, you could confuse it with a Budio species easily, depending on the posture. Um, even a falcon, depending on how it's moving, it could look like it has sharp wings. Uh, I think for me, they look, quite similar to an exhibitor, depending on, on what angle you're looking at. Uh, but then piecing all those other characteristics together, the plumage, the flight characteristics, or the mannerisms, um, and of course the habitat again, which may or may not fall apart if you're up on a mountain range. Yeah, if, if, if different shapes and, and looks are <clears throat> leading you to all of those three different things, it might be worth considering Harrier. And once you really know Harrier, it's a pretty distinct silhouette. Yeah, you can pick them up pretty distant and, uh, and tease it apart from, from those other species groups. So Northern Harrier uh, from the top side, they have this patch on the back right here that is often called a rump patch. It's technically not the rump, it's the upper tail coverts. Um, and it's consistently present on all Northern Harriers. So it, you know, in the last bird we looked at, you wouldn't have been able to see that because it was from the underside gliding over. If you see a look like this, you can definitely pick that out and know that that's a Harrier characteristic. They've got this owl-like facial disc, which is unique among diurnal raptors in North America. Kind of this rufous They're coat. trying their rufous. best best to be owls. Trying their best to be owls. But that, that helps because that low hunting style that I was describing before, they're, they're using um, the sound that's being directed from that facial disc to their ears and picking up a little more um, sound, so they rely on sound a little more than some of the other diurnal um, raptor species. And you can kind of see a dihedral in this this image. The bird's wings are kind of cocked up, um, which is which is a, kind of the typical way that these birds, especially when they're gliding along low over vegetation, how they're holding the wings. So what's unique about uh, differentiating harriers, Dave? So um, like the kestrels that we talked about before, um, the, the, the adult sexes are dimorphic in their plumage so that you can tell, um, you can tell males from, from females. Uh, and then females and juvenile harriers um, are a little more similar, but there's some things that you can look for too. And so um, females and juveniles are, are overall more, more brown. Um, and basically you can, based on what you can see underside, you can, if you see streaking and sort of brown streaking, that's, that's a characteristic of an adult, um, adult female. Um, the other thing you can notice here is if you, if you get a good look like this and you can see the eye is that, um, adults have yellow eyes, whereas a, a juvenile bird would not. we have an image of a juvenile bird now, Jesse? Yeah, I added it at the end. So we'll see the male beforehand. Okay. There's a top side of a of a female. Um, so if you only got that that look, you can see the the eye is lighter. So if you had a photo, you could come to an, an age. Um, but you're not wrong in saying this is a this is a harrier. It was brown, um, unknown sex. This one's got the buffiness on the top. And we go over to the male. Um, 
Folks often refer to the male, adult male harriers as gray ghosts. So they're, you can see why they're just kind of this ghostly figure. You're, you're looking at all these hawks flying by all day and then a gray, a gray raptor flies by. This is kind of a ghostly thing. Um, so they're pretty distinct. There's nothing that really looks like them at all. So they, they of course hold all those characteristics as far as flight style, flight mannerisms that we already talked about, uh, but then they've got the plumage that sets them apart. And it is worth noting that there's a whole spectrum of color for these adult males. They can they can appear almost uh, brown as well. So like, look closely if you get photos and you, you think it's kind of a brown hue and you just spread it off as a female, it's possible that it could be a male as well. Another look from the top side, that bright yellow eye, um, pretty pretty unmistakable. You can kind of see that facial disc um, from this this angle. But regardless of of sex or age, that that silhouette up above, that that general shape, is gonna be the same. And here is a look at a juvenile northern harrier. They kind of obviously this looks similar to the female, the adult female that we looked at. Um, but I kind of think of it as like a pumpkin color. There's not any streaking, which is the big giveaway. Um, all the age of the feathers look like they're the same age, so that's helpful. Um, and it's just kind of this pumpkin color, darker eye. This is a juvenile. I think it's actually a female, but that's tricky. It's, it's close enough to just say this is a juvenile area. That's the Northern Harrier. I think we might have got a comment there. Someone asked, is the Northern Harrier also called the Marsh Hawk or is that a Hen Harrier? Yeah, that, that, is, a, that is another um, colloquial name for the Northern Harrier is the Marsh Hawk. And that kind of goes towards their, their, their habitat, sort of marshy grassland areas. So, yes. And they're very similar, I think, to the to the hen harrier, I think I think these guys are what Circus Hudsonius and it's Circus uh, Cyanus for the other ones. So I you know I don't know the details there, but they they look very similar. I've never seen a hen harrier, but I think there's a lot of consistencies. Turkey vulture. So we're going to jump into some vultures now, um, and so the first is the, the one you can see probably in most most areas uh, is the turkey vulture. And you can see by its its range map here that it's abundant um, across much of South America and North America, um, South America year round, um, North America a good part of the year. And you see some of the Northern and um, in, in Northwestern um, populations migrate out. Um, but but um, the, um, the turkey vulture is widespread. It's one of the, the species you'll see a lot in a lot of um, migration sites, for sure. And let's, let's take a look at a video of turkey vulture. From top side, dark bird. Really dark bird. Long wings, too. A lot of long wing species that we're talking about so far today. Mm -hmm. Broad wings. As it turns, and you see that underside, uh, key to turkey vultures is that uh, uh, they've got lighter silvery um, flight feathers on the underside, which creates this two-toned look with a black body and black uh, like underwings, but then the, the flight feathers are, are light, and you can see that right there where Jesse's paused that. So almost, I, I don't think I'd recommend this as a tool to differentiate them, but in my mind, like it's almost the opposite of, say, a Swainson's hawk, because the, the body there is black and the Flight feathers are light, which is kind of the opposite. Yeah. But it's it's not a great comparison. But the the fact is that they're just super super dark overall, and then that kind of silvery gray contrast on the flight feathers. What Real easy see? easy going fluid wing beats. Look at right. that shape. Look at that shape on that pause right there. Just a real kind of a V shape with his, which is pretty characteristic. These guys have a strong dihedral in flight. Um, and they're really efficient flyers. They they do their best not to flap very much. And so it's kind of a treat actually to see them flapping like we do in this window. 
or this wi window, this video is what I'm trying to say. Often these turkey vultures will get up and just float around and kind of tip. They're always tipping and tilting. Um, and because they're 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 doing that to fly efficiently with the wind and like not use very much energy, and so they're very efficient at flying. Yeah, that that really strong dihedral or modified dihedral and and that kind of rocking that, that Jesse was talking about is it makes it pretty easy to ID them from even pretty pretty good distances. What what is that that modified dihedral, Dave? So you got your uh, your pointer right there. So remember, we we so, talked about dihedral. It's how much of a V uh, holding the wings not from a flat plane but up. So that's a dihedral, and and we've discussed either mild dihedrals or extreme dihedrals. A modified dihedral is up in a V, but then the outer parts of the wings kind of level out from the wrist. So it's like uh, that image right there. You can see that that wing goes up and then it comes out. So that's a modified dihedral. Same thing in the dark silhouette there. Again, if it was a straight dihedral, this would just be straight up like this versus this is the wrist right here. Um, and they do both, but they they definitely have, in certain postures, have that modified dihedral look where wings are up and then they're kind of cocked like this. Yep. Uh, I guess we didn't mention off, oftentimes, not as a rule, but oftentimes you'll see a large number of vultures together or, or just numbers more than one, which is not, Generally, you could say not the case with all these other species we've talked about today, not as a rule, but it's you could see 60 turkey vultures together and maybe you see two or three eagles together. Um, so if you see a big group, that's a question we often get. I saw a big group of dark birds soaring together. What are they? And like my mind snaps to vulture of some sort. Um, yeah. So just, just kind of keep that in mind. The other thing you can kind of see in this image, particularly that upper right photo silhouette that, that you get off of a turkey vulture from straight below, if you can't see the dihedral, what you can notice is a really long winged bird that mm -hmm. doesn't have much of a head. I mean, you can see the head sticking out, but really tiny head. Um, and, the, you know, that the lack of feathers makes the head appear small, depending on the light that you get. And you can see it in some of these images. You can you can catch some some color off of the bird, either a pink or a red or kind of a gray. What does that tell us, Jesse? Yeah, we'll go to the next image. So, adult turkey vultures have a bright pinkish turkey-like head, and so that's that's what they generally look like. And they've got this kind of ivory-tipped white uh, bill. So that's a good look at a at an adult turkey vulture, and often. If the if the light hits that like if, if the light is hitting their face well, it actually kind of lights up their little ivory tip bill on an adult. So you can just kind of keep that in mind if if you happen to get a good look. And then the younger birds have kind of a darker bill and a kind of grayish head. But again, regardless of age here, here's a nice kind of look at that modified dihedral almost. The wings are kind of uh, not fully extended, so it's not looks like the bird could be flapping or just keeping its wings back but you kind of get the feel versus this going straight up like this it's cocked right here at the wrist but yeah you can you can still see regardless of the age everything else here fits turkey vulture got the silvery gray blackish body that v kind of shape small head you've got a turkey vulture We've got another um, vulture species that you'll see, depending on where you are in, in North America, um, is the black vulture. And you can see that the, the range is, for the most part, the south southeast into Texas and down into Central America and South America, where they're more common. But they do range up up the East Coast, and they're, they're in Pennsylvania and frequently counted and seen um, along the eastern um, stretch of North America and counted on migration. And so... Um, See their distribution here. Let's take a, a look at a uh, video of black vultures. So, so hopefully, uh, after we've mentioned it so much that you see that, like, the very first thing that jumps out at me and, and jump in, Jesse, uh, if I leave something out, is that that's a broad winged bird. The wing is is thick and stout, right? Stocky mm -hmm. throughout overall dark uh, when you catch it right 
there a little bit, you get a flash of a little bit of, of light on the outer flight feathers, the outer feathers of the wing. You'll see it better here in a minute. I think you can see it right there, right? Yeah, all these freeze frames, you can kind of see, trying to get a good one that's not blurry. So, so instead of having all of the flight feathers be silvery or, or lighter tone to them, like the turkey vulture, um, black vultures have that characteristic just on the, the outer primaries or outer flight feathers towards the ends of the wings. Um, and sometimes that's hidden from the underside, but it usually shows up really well from the top side. These guys appear a lot more just stocky or stubby than a turkey vulture. You often see them together. So, you know, you could have a, a big group of both of these species flying overhead. And the same same logic applies here, where if you if there's one black vulture, there's probably more. You can think about like, yeah, just just they're they're kind of moving around in groups often and, and scavenging and foraging um, and, and migrating together. So here's a great look showing the the kind of outer primaries and how they're more silvery gray than the rest of the feathers. What what other characteristics kind of excuse me stand out to you, Dave? Yeah, that that, that wing is super broad. You know, they uh, the other thing to note here is really pretty much a short tail, um, but it's a very short and squared off, angular, rigid looking tail. And then with you know with the 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 image here, you can actually see the the legs and the toes actually kind of trailing and almost extending just a touch beyond the tail there, right? Mm -hmm. So these guys kind of have that dihedral as well, but maybe not as pronounced as the turkey vultures. More yeah. more flat winged than a turkey vulture, yeah. Yeah, shallower wing beats, um, not as, I guess, heavy in the wing beats as, as the eagles or the turkey vultures, just kind of those quick the, the 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 beat of the vault the black vulture is almost a little more frantic almost like um some of the smaller birds we talked about that that like a exhibitor like f choppy um than the turkey vulture which has a really fluid graceful easy beat that doesn't look like it's working hard black vultures look like they're working a little harder yeah i think we're good on black vulture yeah so our last species i guess of the series is the California condor. Can you talk about them? And so you might notice that we've zoomed in quite a bit in our range map. We don't need to look at uh, well, all, all the Americas. Um, pretty small distribution for this species. And so if you want to see California condors in the wild, you got to go to California or um, their, their populations in Arizona and, and the southwestern portions of Utah. You can see that here. Um, this is a huge um, species. We might want to um, move on to the next slide. So here we go. Here's a picture of the condor. Um, we included these because we don't necessarily count them migrating. They, they don't migrate, but they are a species that's present um, at the Grand Canyon where our, our Grand Canyon site is. And so if you visit the Grand Canyon at any time of year or, you, or if you visit during migration and stop in, um, you've got a pretty good chance of, of getting a look like this. And they, although they're not migrating, they can move huge distances in, in a single day, hundreds of miles, I think. Um, and that's because they're like, like those vultures, they're, they've got massive wings, even much larger, and they can just open their wings and soar for miles and miles and miles. Um, so you could see them, you could see them in Wyoming or Utah or somewhere else. Um, if you saw a massive bird that looked like this, it's maybe unlikely, but if you got a, a photo to prove it, um, it's it's not unrealistic. So well, let's go back real quick, Jesse. Yep. Uh, I think I just saw a question come in. So what we're, well, one, um, you mentioned a little, this, this is like the epitome of a broad winged bird, right? Mm -hmm. Really broad plank like wings, the, the white um, underwing plumage shows up from quite afar. And someone asked about the uh, what's on the wings of these condors here. Yeah, you see, those are patagial tags. Those are wing tags that are unique um, combinations of, of letters and numbers so that um, people from the ground can spot and identify individual vultures from afar. And, and a good portion, if not all, of the, the condors that are out um, are are banded or wing tagged like this, or have also transmitters, which Jesse will show another image of here in just a second. Um, but those are for tracking and identifying individuals. Yeah, I think I think if 
if and hopefully like this happens, hopefully there are wild bred condors that are occurring. Like that's the goal, of course, is to have them naturally reproducing in the wild. Um, when that happens and it does, those individuals, which are obviously untagged at the time that they leave the nest, uh, there's an effort to capture them and, and mark them um, just because every condor is kind of critical. These are one of the most endangered, endangered bird species in the world. Um, so I think I, I think there's like 400 plus, I hesitate to give an exact number, but there's not a lot of California condors that exist. So every one is crucial for the species recovery. Um, so tracking each one and knowing the history and, and they actually will capture these birds and, and test their blood for lead because lead is a, a big problem for them. Um, so that that's why so much effort is put into identifying each of these individuals. Yeah. Maybe that there's that you can see the top side, you see those little um, lines. Those are antennas of transmitters that are attached to those wing tags so that um, researchers can find individual birds and check in on them to make sure that they are um, still still going strong. I guess the other thing to mention about condors, these California condors, is if you're if you're at a place where they exist, you're probably also somewhere where the, the turkey vultures are. Um, and you know we talked about turkey vultures are a pretty big bird, but when you're somewhere watching a group of turkey vultures and you see a condor come in, it is um, kind of mind blowing. It's you know, it's stunning how much larger and how small condors will make the relatively large sized turkey vultures I, up here. If you've seen like a golden eagle and a raven flying next to it, you you think wow that golden eagle is massive. <laughs> It's yeah. kind of the same thing with a, a California condor next to an eagle or next to a, a turkey vulture. They're that big that it's like, oh, they're, they are clearly kind of the king of the sky. <clears throat> really worth seeing. And again, like you, you can see these at, at the Grand Canyon Hawk Watch pretty consistently. Um, so that's one place, uh, at least in the future, to, to go check them out. Um, and, and of course, California and other places. You, you can find them relatively easy if you know where to look and do a little bit of research. They don't hide well. No. All right. So that's that's it for the the, the species that we're going to cover. We wanted to pull the um, the quiz images back up, and we're not going to take this quiz again. Don't worry, we've got another one. Um, but want to talk about what we see to, to make these IDs, right? So hopefully we start off right with the California condor and, and one. You see those um, very, very broad wings that are super long, extending into the really long outer primaries that look like fingers. The white underwing, um, that, that, that all of that points to California condor. You want to talk us through number two, Jesse? Yeah, number two is the golden eagle. Um, kind of overall vibe is a brownish, dark bird you can see the wings kind of pinch pinch in let me get my pointer we've already talked about that the wings kind of pinch in towards the body um, head projection and the tail projection are lesser than we would probably expect with the bald eagle um, and that's that's what kind of leads us to to the golden eagle lack of very much white at all in this in this bird which is helpful what about this one dave and the three is is the the osprey again. You see that contrasting black and white plumage that is pretty clear. The long wings, but they're narrow wings, and how they droop and they bow down um, out and kind of create that M shape. That's that's all pretty pretty good for for osprey. And then four, four is a bald eagle. It's a young bird. I think it is a juvenile. Um, and you can see a lot of white in the wings of this bird. Dark bill. Bill's kind of uh, blocked by the background of the bird's wing, um, but it's a big, big head and a big tail with the big, big bill, dark bill in this particular individual because it's a younger bird. Um, and you can just kind of get the vibe right away that it's a massive bird just with the broad wings and, and the big body. So at least you can get to eagle if, if not bald eagle. So hopefully that helps. And, and if you uh, got the, um, didn't guess or were unknown or or didn't get the answer when we showed these the first time. Hopefully you see those characteristics now and and help uh, helps you arrive to to the ID for these species. So now we're going to show in instead of a the closed panel repeat quiz, 
we're gonna do quick two quick video quizzes so we're gonna fire this up i'm gonna open up a poll um, if you want to make a guess on the idea of this species as you're watching the video please do so we'll talk about it in a second we'll talk about the things we're looking at when the birds go in here but uh watch this Oops, sorry i'm trying to move the poll out of my window this is a tricky one so we start to see brown we see some striping on the tail we got a long tail there it goes you play that one more time let's play that one more time uh i guess there's only 30 seconds left on the quiz well see that white white base of the tail or, or rump sometimes it's referred to we are um, doing pretty good here polls about to close make your choice uh, yes submit my I forgot to hit submit I almost lost my I guess well you might you probably would have gotten it wrong anyway right Jesse yeah, most likely all right so what was that one Dave so we are looking at a northern harrier so watch it one more time talk through it. and oh, wow. the results hey great results 42 out of yeah 56 everybody did a pretty good job you know the, the one the one way you could kind of maybe go down the wrong path you want to talk about what yeah, I think the most obvious thing for me is this bird could be confused with a with a exhibitor, maybe particularly a Cooper's hawk. Um, it just, you know, the white the white patch on the upper tail coverts is super helpful getting to Harrier, but just kind of the vibe of the bird could be confusing. Like right there, that yeah, yeah. if I only saw that image, I would be like, hmm, that's tricky. You get a long tail and the kind of the angle there kind of dwarfs how long the wings actually are right and so yeah that could point you towards exhibitor a little bit yeah but that northern harrier everybody did a pretty darn good job yeah i'm impressed so we've got one more you want to watch it first and put up the sure Look at the shape. Look at how it's flying. Then look for some of those those plumage characteristics we talked about. All right, pop it up there. We'll play it again. I'm going to open the poll. It's funny. It pauses it when the poll opens for me. And here we go. Polls open for just a minute, and then it gives you just a 20 minute grace period. So, you've got time to keep watching and keep thinking. This one's a little tougher. Do one more play. Ten seconds. I'm about to close the poll here, so make your guess if you've got one. Okay. We'll close that. Can you put the we'll results up and play it, Jesse. You want to start talking about that? I'll I'll get these results up here in a minute. Yeah. So we've got a big bird. Um, for me, I snapped to eagle pretty quickly because it's just a massive dark overall bird tough to see because you don't get a lot of underside until right about here you can see that it's pretty blotchy white throughout the underside um you can see here there's a pretty big bill sticking out long tail um that angle is a little tough to see how far the head projects right at the end when it gets dark yeah right there you get a good head projection you really like that bill is large and i think a couple more frames as the wing beat goes up 
starts getting dark there starts getting dark but then you also start to see okay there's a lot of uh kind of speckled light on the underwing that is not localized right it's going in backwards motion now it's oh well never seen a bird fly backwards mm -hmm. never seen a hummingbird <laughs> touche a bird this big so um this what is this jesse this is a bald eagle this is a bald eagle so uh Looks like the group's kind of split. Most people were leaning golden golden eagle, which I can totally see see why with the angles that that this video gives. Yeah, it's a tough. Uh, I mean, it's a quiz for a reason. It's tough. Yeah, it's not a give me. But hopefully, th those points that we were talking about help everybody see um, why it's a bald eagle. And uh, that is it for today, right? So that wraps up all of the, the group focused ID sessions. Thanks for, for taking part uh, in today's session. If, and if you've been in some of the other ones, thanks for doing that. Hopefully you enjoyed them and learned something. Uh, we do have one more session scheduled for next week, for next Tuesday, which will be kind of a, a wrap up. We'll have time for a Q and A. Um, we're gonna be joined by um, one of our colleagues who has spent a lot of time um, as on migration crews. Uh, and, and in the field doing raptor research, and so um, um, she'll join us, and we'll we'll just kind of talk about things. And then our, our goal and hope is to check in live um, with the Corpus Christi site and, and talk to them and see what they're seeing, and then to to hear from the Grand Canyon crew as well, if the technology lets us do that. So um, if you are interested and have time, hopefully you'll join us for that. Uh, if anyone's got any questions, I haven't checked the Q and A panel in a while. Let's see here. Oh, looks like we had a question about one of the eagles. I'm not sure which it was. Where would you suggest to go near Salt Lake City to, to look at raptors and migration? So if you're in Salt Lake, um, anywhere along the Wasatch is probably good. Um, if you're looking to get up near the top, there's a road that goes up to Bountiful Peak, um, which is, is a great place. Um, Squaw Peak further south um, down there is good. There's, you know, anywhere you can get up high um, or even not even that high, just kind of up above the, the city um, is probably pretty good for watching birds come along the range there. And that applies to anywhere you are where there's kind of north south running ranges um, or if there's a long um, leading lines of water or anything like that. Like we talked, we talked about what makes a good migration site in the very first um, session of the series. Um, but, but those sort of places are, are good to go. You know, but anywhere you are, you know, if you, if you just keep in mind to look up at this time of year, um, there are places mm -hmm. where they're focused, but, you know, uh, an eagle or a harrier or anything could be coming by almost anywhere, really. Good question, though. So, yeah. Thanks, remember everybody. To, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, remember to look north in the fall because birds are coming from the north. That's a really good point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully they're yeah. mostly heading heading south southeast um the if you there's a question about the other sessions those are on the hawk watch youtube channel and i think there's a link in the chat and if there's not a link in the chat um there are links on our social media and if you just go to hawkwatch.org um up in the upper part of that page there's like a link to all of the social media like instagram facebook and there's a little play button for youtube that'll take you to our youtube channel and these are all up on there so if you missed something and want to see it that's the place to look so um cool we'll call it a day thanks call everybody Friday. hopefully you enjoyed it um we hope to like i said see you guys in in person at a real hawk watch someday looking at real birds so i uh, hope you learned something and thanks for tuning in bye everybody <laughs>